In this series of videos, we'll look at Business Center Heavy Construction Edition's mass haul modules that employ innovative haul route optimization techniques for planning earthworks on your corridor and site projects. Here we'll look at corridor mass haul analysis including designating haul roads with associated costs, waste and borrow sites with associated capacities and costs, as well as different haul ranges for different types of equipment. We'll add barriers that cannot be crossed when hauling, and we'll generate mass haul diagrams for visualizing material movement and balancing the mass haul by type of equipment. Additionally, we'll run reports that show volumes to be moved by each type of machine, and we'll look at visualizing the haul ranges in both Business Center and Google Earth. First, we'll open the file that already has the following items an original ground surface called Dimensions 2010 that we can see in both the plan and 3D views. If we turn on the alignment layers in the view filter manager, we'll see that we have an alignment for a corridor that's labeled with stationing values. Note the starting station location in the plan view here, Station 0. If we select the alignment in the Project Explorer, we can go to Edit, and this opens up the Alignment Editor, where we can see the horizontal segments of the alignment, as well as the vertical segments of the profile. If we look at the Profile view by right-click on the alignment and say New Profile View, here we can see the profile of the corridor. We'll notice that we have a corridor in the Project Explorer called Trimble Road, and we can go to the View Filter Manager to turn on its surface in the Plan view. Back in the Project Explorer, if we right-click on the alignment and say New 3D Drive View, here we can drive the surface of the road. So I'm going to drag the 3D Drive View tab up to the top. I'm also going to go back to the View Filter Manager and turn on the Cut Fill Map so we can see the Cut Fill shading of the corridor surface. Now we've actually draped the Cut Fill Map on top of the finished design surface. And to do that, we go to the Cut Fill Map, we go to its Properties, and in the Properties, we just say Drape Surface set to Yes, and now that drapes the Cut Fill shading on top of the finished design surface of the corridor. Now we simply drive along the corridor surface using the arrow keys on our keyboard, or using the slider to go along the stations, or along the alignment of the corridor. Here we can see how the design interacts with the original ground surface and see the cut fills as we drive along. If we expand the corridor in the Project Explorer, we'll notice that it has a template assigned to it. If we right-click the template and say Edit, this will open the Template Editor view. This is where you can create a corridor in Business Center from instructions or typical cross-sections. In this case, the corridor template is already created, and we can see the shape of it and how it interacts with the existing ground. And you'll see cuts and fills between the design and the existing ground cross-section. We'll also see corresponding areas of cuts and fills for this cross-section. Right now, we're at Station 0, and we see the corresponding cut and fill areas between the design and the existing ground surface. If we scroll through the stations, we'll see how the design changes as well as how the existing ground changes and the corresponding differences or cuts and fills between those two surfaces. Note that you could also have a subgrade surface in here as well and see the corresponding subgrade areas in each cross-section in the upper left-hand corner. 